Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, Commissioners. Of course, we are here to uh, discuss the establishment of an EU mechanism on democracy, rule of law and fundamental rights. But what we are really discussing and should be debating uh, is the very future and identity of the EU as a democratic peace project. Now, I grew up in Slovakia and years after the Velvet Revolution, and for people of my generation, membership in the European Union basically meant a guarantee of life in freedom and democracy. The EU was meant to be a place where you don't get imprisoned if you speak out freely, which is what the communist regime did to, to my grandfather, who was a dissident intellectual. The EU was meant to be a place where you don't get thrown out of your job for disagreeing with those in power, which is what happened to uh, other members of my family. But the problem is that the image, this image of the EU, the image of my youth, the image of the EU as a guardian of democracy is now being shattered. And instead, it has developed a very high tolerance, unacceptably high tolerance for authoritarian politics. I mean, at least we have one member state which can no longer be considered democracy. We have another member state, Poland, in which judges can be prosecuted for uh, verdicts against the interests of the ruling party. In many other member states, we have thousands on the street protesting years of corruption and state capture, all of which begs the question, where has the EU been while national governments have undermined democratic institutions or plundered public resources? Now, the proposal that we put before the plenary should put the EU in a position to do much more. What we need is a permanent, legally binding mechanism that, first of all, streamlines and makes more effective the instruments, the rule of law instruments that we have. Second, co covers all aspects of Article 2 and all values they are enshrined. And third, ensures that compliance by member states is not just reviewed periodically, but also enforced. Precisely, enforcement and action is what has so far been missing also from the Commission's otherwise very thorough and very welcome uh, report last week. But it is clear that monitoring alone will not bring back judicial independence in Poland, nor will it save the index media in Hungary. Really, we do need enforcement. For instance, on uh, in, in Poland, the Commission still hasn't come up with a request to impose fines, despite the fact that the Polish government is disrespecting the ruling of the European Court of Justice, and we can continue on and on. But equally importantly, the Council needs to stop diluting the budget conditionality proposal. I mean, we know that the EU money has demonstrably fueled the rise of authoritarian and corrupt politics in, in our member states, and this cannot continue. But the problem is, it will continue if the proposal uh, of the German presidency is adopted because it is weak and will not protect either the EU budget nor rule of law in Europe. Now, if the Commission and the Council are serious in restoring, serious about restoring the EU as a community of shared values, I would expect them to begin immediately negotiations on the proposal that the Parliament is putting forward for a binding mechanism as soon as possible. Now, we know that there will be pushback and we know that some member states might reject it outright, seeing as they are willing to hold hostage the entire continent about the rule of law conditionality. But there is a piece of good news as well. The Council only needs a qualified majority to negotiate and adopt uh, our proposal and therefore reclaim some of the EU's aspiration for a democratic project. Thank you very much.